Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to the open data stream, uh, first parallel stream for RSE 2022. And I'd like to introduce uh, Stefan Druskat, who will be talking to us about research software on wings, automating software publication with rich metadata. So over to you, Stefan. Yes, so I'm Stefan. I am a doctoral candidate at the German Aerospace Center, DLR, and Humboldt Union Berlin. And I will present uh, a project that we've started kind of around about last year, I think, a year ago. Um, and it is all about making things easier for RSEs in terms of how you can publish your software. So uh, I think that the tagline yet really, really is true, automating software publication with rich metadata. And before I actually go into um, the details, let me just know, I'm, I'm going to talk a bit about software publication in general, what we think it is, what we think it should be, and what's important in software publication, what it enables. And then I'll talk about the project itself and how we plan to automate the publication of software with rich metadata and then give you some insights in uh, into where we are now with the project. So software publication. Um, why would we want to publish, publish our software in the first place? I think there are four at least very good reasons to do so because um, a publication enables the sustainability of the software in some respects in that if you publish it, it's on the public record and likely going into an archive and it'll stick around for some time. But it also enables reproducibility because if people know where to find your software, then they can kind of try and rerun it and try to reproduce any research results that have been gained using that software. And academic credit is pretty, pretty much self-explaining. Software publication works like a paper publication, ideally, so that when people use your software, they can cite it, and then you get academic credit and hopefully you know, get, to do a, get, to get to do a career in, in research software based on that. And finally, and this is a fairly new development, um, software publication also enables making your software fair, as in fair for research software, which is now an official RDA um, as a guideline or something, um, which is basically the, the fair principles for research data transferred and adapted to research software, so that software can be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reproducible. Now, what does uh, software publication actually look like? Um, today, we, I think, are already in a pretty good place to um, publish our software in a fair way. And what we understand as software publication is, you take the metadata describing the software, and if it's open source, which we all hope it is, then you also take the software artifacts, source code, binaries, etc. You push them to a target publication repository, um, such as Zenodo, for example, which is a generic example, but you may have domain uh, publication repos repositories for your digital artifacts. And what you get back is a persistent identifier, usually a DOI for the software version you publish. Sometimes you also get a concept DOI for the software product as such, which collects all, this, all the versions under one DOI. And you usually also get a landing page with the metadata that you gave the repository embedded in some form and uh, kind of presented to the user so they can assess the software and whether it's of use to them in the future. Um, the interoperability and reusability uh, parts of the FAIR principles really depend on the software itself, so that's not something that software publication as such can enable, but it's you know, down, down to use RZs to make make the software, the data model, um, um, interoperable, you know, make the software usable by using modularity, et cetera. Um, getting there from this part, so having your source code, having some metadata, or at least knowledge about the metadata, to that part usually includes filling in forms manually. And this is not something that we like. Um, so we thought, well, we do have a lot of metadata already in the source code repository, usually. Uh, that we can just reuse and kind of try and automate that process of getting the metadata, uh, preparing the metadata for publication, and then automatically kind of pushing them into the repository. Um, there are some automation practices already, so we have something like the GitHub Zenodo integration, um, which 
means that when you publish, you activate that thing, and when you publish um, a release on GitHub, it'll, um, it'll be pulled automatically to a Zenodo record, which is great. It's a great start, but it doesn't give you any control of, uh, over the metadata. And that's a problem, um, as you can see, because you'll end up filling in the form, kind of refilling in the form anyway. So this is where our project Hermes comes in. We try to give you back control over the publication process, over the metadata. <clears throat> and we also try to make it easier for you to, to publish uh, the, the software with rich metadata. Because what we say is that, um, like I said, the, the source code repos already have all that metadata. Why not, why not use that to make the publication actually kind of more, more rich in metadata in an automated fashion? So a few words about the projects. Just generally, um, we are being funded for two years by the Helmholtz Metadata Collaboration, which is an incubator program in the Helmholtz Association of Research Centers in Germany. Um, there are three Helmholtz centers being involved, um, as at DLR, and we have our colleague Oliver Berto from Jülich, and some colleagues, including Oliver Knodel over there from um, the Helmholtz Centrum in Dresden-Rossendorf. We have been running for a year. We'll run another year. And the aim is just generally uh, to support RSEs in automatically publishing the software with rich metadata. We've, the first thing we've done is we've sat down and had a look at the state of the art and have written a concept paper of, you know, what, what metadata types there are, what the existing tooling is, what existing workflows are, what the possibilities for our project would be to implement such a thing. And that concept paper is online, and um, it's linked in the slides, and the slides are, I think, they're available in the program, so you can um, go from A to B. Now, the scope we have uh, worked, um, we, we, we've tried to come up with a scope that we crafted very carefully, because um, there are very, very many things that can go wrong, and um, I will actually read this to you, because it's m the best way I can, I can do in making sure that the scope is precise, so you understand it. So the idea is that you, as an RSE, as the user, you get assistance in depositing your software in an automated fashion, that's point one. Um, and this can also be used, and that's perhaps quite interesting to some of you working in labs where you can't just make your software open source. This will also work for closed source software because a software publication doesn't necessarily mean you have to push your source code somewhere. It can mean that you have the, all the metadata available and um, with details um, about how to get to the software if needs be, and if it's possible in the first place. Um, so what we are going to do, we are going to pr provide uh, workflows, workflows that run in continuous integration systems, such as GitHub Actions or GitLab CI, etc. cetera. Um, these workflows will be software, and they'll be modularized, so you can extend them with plugins for new, new things that you want. Um, you will have to configure them to some extent, although we try and work with um, sensible defaults, and they ha will have the capability to be executed for any number of software publications in any number of target publication repositories. So you, have, you can have two packages that can be gonna go to six different repositories, if you like. They will come from the same origin, the same source code repository, and you will be able to configure them. And the way we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna show you a nicer picture later on so you understand properly, um, is we're gonna harvest the metadata, we are going to collate the metadata, meaning we will have a look at it, deduplicate, try and find issues with it, report them back to you as the user. And then um, we will push them to target publication repositories, we call them. And that's basically um, repositories that are run on Invenio RDM or Dataverse. Maybe it's an auto, maybe it's something that is run in your institution. Um, we will also, because we know that's the case for our own institutions, uh, make sure that there is a curation step in the middle. Um, because sometimes your line manager will have to sign off on publications. And that's, you know, it's, it's, it's the same with software publications. So there will be a step where you have all the metadata collected, you have the package bundled, and you get just given to your, to whoever needs to sign off on it. And they come, can come back to you and say, that's good, or you better, you know, work, work on the metadata again. Um, also, there'll be a way to kind of feed back all, the, all that package information, all the metadata into the source code repository for later use. Because, you know, you don't want to repeat all that collation process over and over again. It may be work intensive in the first place, but um, it'll be much easier later on. So, yeah, you as the RZ will just push your uh, source code to the repository on GitHub or GitLab or whatever. Uh, this will trigger the CI CD pipeline, which will then in turn execute the workflow. And the workflow will collate 
metadata from different sources, so dedicated metadata files, I'll talk about this in a, in a second, uh, code files um, that may have license information, for example, or copyright information, the headers, documentation files, but also uh, we're targeting platform APIs, we call them, which is uh, maybe the GitHub API that, that'll have some information about uh, who contributed, maybe the, the Git API itself or Git information itself um, that can tell you something about who actively contributed code to a repository, for example. But also static code analysis platforms that are kind of tied into your repository um, that may have interesting metrics, for example, um, that you may want to publish. And then the next, once, once all this is collected um, and collated, so processed, uh, the next step is then to propose a publication in the curation step. If you don't need to ask anyone, you can just skip that and go straight to the publication step. But the curation will happen uh, in some form and there may be a feedback loop back to back to square one. But if you're successful, then you just publish, just publish to the publication repository and you're done. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're going to implement this as CI, so continuous integration um, plugins, workflows. So you, um, under, the, under the hood, what will, what will happen is you'll have four pipelines that just go through the steps necessary to bundle that package together. Metadata harvesting is a very important step. At the moment, we're looking at uh, citation file format.cff files, so a dedicated metadata file with citation information. We're looking at code meta files, which is generic, more, more generic metadata about the software, um, not limited to citation information alone. Um, and we're looking at the, at the Git information we have in the repository. Um, the next step is metadata processing, and that's really the core of the issue we're tackling because we need a good way of running heuristics on duplicate entries, on uh, diverging entries that have some similarities, etc. I need a good way to feed them back to the user as well so as to uh, limit the amount of work you have to put into the metadata curation yourself. Next step then is metadata deposition. Um, and that includes the, the curation step, and then we have some post-processing pipeline that will just you know, make sure that you'll be able to get uh, the metadata from the workflow and put, put, put them back in your repository. And when I say the, the metadata, we are implementing those uh, as serialization in code meta.json, which seems to be emerging as the, the industry standard, so to speak, uh, for kind of yeah, rich metadata for software. Um, at each stage, you can have outputs. Um, they'll, of course, run into the internal data model of the workflow, but there may be ways to just plug in there and say, at this stage, I really want to look at the data itself, so give me the, the metadata at the stage you're, you're at, and, and I want to work on that. So, um, One or two words about metadata in source code repositories. So there are very many different types of metadata to start with. Um, that's because they come from different steps in the software development process. Um, this includes, you know, commit metadata, contribution metadata. It includes dedicated, authorized um, author metadata, citation metadata, etc. But also things like artifact metadata. You just they happen to be created in the in the uh, development workflow itself. Um, there is you can you can divide between uh, the gene generic software metadata, so anything that's metadata, but in this case pertains to software, but also software-specific metadata that you don't get in, in any other case. Um, it, it'll come in different formats. So you, you have these dedicated metadata files, but there's also metadata all around. It could be snippets um, of code in some single files. It can be in documentation-free text form, which you'll have to mine. It can be AP, API responses from different systems, like, uh, like I said earlier on. Um, and most importantly, it can be structured or unstructured. And obviously, um, we are going to start off with working with the collectible, uh, identifiable, structured metadata because that's the low-hanging fruit. We want to test our kind of MVP against. Um, but we also plan to continue employing some uh, free text mining tools to try and get more uh, metadata from, say, readmes, for example, um, and wherever we can, find, we can find them. But in the first iteration, we're really going to focus on the, the collectible structured metadata. Right, uh, where are we now? So this is the general roadmap. Did I skip a, oh yeah, I skipped a slide, sorry. That's really important because that's the outputs of the, of the project itself. So we've, we've gone and written the concept paper. We put up the 
project website, but these are really low hanging fruits. So um, we are, of course, going to uh, make public, public available in an open fashion, the software itself for the, for the publication workflow, as well as templates for the different CI systems we are targeting, the major ones, GitHub Actions, um, Jenkins probably, and uh, GitLab CI. We are also working on the concept of research software-ready repositories. And that's really important because at the moment, NVIDIA RDM and Dataverse, in different ways, aren't really ready to ingest research software. It may be because some, some things in the data model are missing, um, or you are not able to display something as software, as identifiable software in the UI, for example. So parts of our team are working with these two target uh, publication repository projects to make sure that in the end, what the person uh, who wants to use your software uh, can do is find the software, search for the software, identify it as software, and also make sure that all the metadata fields that we are targeting can be represented in the repository software. This, so this is really, it's, it's a more hidden part of the project, but it's really important. Um, we will also include the use of this, this workflow and the CI plugins in training material that'll be open to everyone, not just Helmholtz. Um, and we'll have, a, you know, but website's gonna be a one-stop shop. But also we're gonna work with um, policy people and people that write guidelines for software en engineering, at least in our institutions, but hopefully this will kind of resonate into the wider uh, community about successfully employing our workflow to make things easier and more robust in terms of software publication with metadata. Right, but where are we? Um, concept paper's been written, we are going to update it. Um, we have run a requirements analysis in, during a, a, a stakeholder uh, workshop um, and have tried to match the user expectation with what we thought about this. I think this worked quite well. Uh, some of that stuff it's, it's, has been fed back into the concept paper. We are now in the process of uh, implementing the workflow tools but and also working with the uh, publication repository projects to make sure that the data model is up to scratch and UI can represent research software. Um, and distribution, th that'll be in the next steps once we're kind of um, finished in terms of an, of an MVP. So what we've done in the past, in the past few months is we've done a lot of community outreach because we really want to make sure that people understand what we're trying to do and that we, what we produce will help people in their daily work pub publishing their software. Um, we've talked to different repository projects we have had a look at related metadata tools, are in, in touch with their communities as well. Um, we've talked to infrastructure providers because they will have to deploy the updated um, repository software to their infrastructures. But also we're talking to RSEs, to IT departments, to computing centers, so basically you. And um, luck has it that we're running a workshop tomorrow where you can come in, we're going to show you where we're actually at, so you show you the software and we let you lose on uh, running it, demoing it, looking at the documentation, trying to figure out if that's actually something that will help people. And hopefully we can um, learn a lot of things that we can improve um, from where we are now. So if you're interested in this generally or have questions, you wanna dive in a bit deeper, then come to the workshop tomorrow. Um, it'll be all, after, all, all, all morning um, in room 216. In terms of the workflow implementation, um, we, like I said, we're now harvesting CFF files, code meta files, and Git metadata. Um, processing, uh, we have started working on, but it's still there's still some some work to do. So um, your input is very valued tomorrow if you come if you come to the workshop. Um, we do already have some curation um, because we can put out code meta files. And that's something you can send to your line manager. It's not ideal uh, because that's that's not something they want to read. They want to to be prepared in a different fashion. They can, can simply click off and go through and, and edit, etc. Uh, so that's something that we still need to do. Uh, the deposition post processing also depends on the progress we made with the repository projects. Um, yeah, and finally we've started work on uh, the concept of resource software ready repositories with people from Dataverse and uh, Invenio, and we are going to also write a position paper of some sort of it. Um, when the project ends next summer, we will have an MVP. That's what we promised. I think we're on a good way getting there. 
um, where you can automatically publish your software with rich metadata. But there is a lot of potential for future work. So we are in touch with a project uh, that cares about resource software sustainability in, in Braunschweig. Uh, we're working with them and they are going to write a plugin for our workflows so they can target their own institutional repository. Uh, we're talking with people within Helmholtz to make sure that um, the, 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 the plan for a research software directory um, includes things like this. Um, the NFDR, which is the National Research Data Infrastructure Program in Germany, is also in the process of setting up such a directory and thinking, or starting to think about this, and we want to make sure we're a part of this. And, you know, there are so many different ways. New metadata types crop up all the time. We want to, we can always kind of try and, and, and extend the metadata mining and get these metadata into our data model. A curation I, a UI would be something that would be great, just a website where people can go and click and say yes or no, or this is wrong, please go back. Um, and also the politically in, more interesting part of uh, research software KPIs, so key performance indicators. This is something where we, we, well, we, that, that we could cater to, and we need to figure out whether that's a good idea, um, providing people with metrics. And you know, especially with the question in the background, that how, how reliable can, can metrics be? How, how easily can they be gamed? Is there something we can do about this? And with that, I am finished. Please get in touch, come to the workshop tomorrow, speak to me anywhere, speak to my colleagues Oliver and Oliver over there. If you want to just wave, <laughs> then feel free to. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your talk. Um, we've got a little bit of time for questions, so we're just going to get the Slido up. Okay, so the first question is, um, just for the recording, does Hermes complement or conflict with the Zenodo GitHub integration? Um, it's a different philosophy, because what the GitHub Zenodo integration does is pull stuff from the repository. And um, just after the break, I'm going to give a talk about the citation file format and the integration with Zenodo. And you'll, sh you'll see in, in, in colors one of the issues that um, th this pull, pull workflow has is because you have no control of the metadata. So what we're trying to do is we follow the push um, uh, philosophy where we say you want to be the person that compiles the metadata, you want to get it ready for publication and push it through the repository. So I guess it's a conflict, you wouldn't want to use both at the same time, um, although we should definitely try that just to see what happens. But um, yeah, it's not something that uh, you want to do and we think push is much better than pull. It gives you more control anyway. Okay, we've got time for one more quick question. Um, yeah, any scope slash process for collecting licensed metadata for components of software systems to automate checks on license compatibility? Um, future work, yes, it's definitely in scope. It's something that would be really interesting to look at. Um, for this iteration of the project, no. Sorry. <laughs> but uh, talk to me if you, if you have ideas about how we can go about this. Okay, thanks. So can we thank um, Stefan again for his talk?